Hello, in this lecture we are going to be creating an RDS database for our application. We are going to create our RDS database in the database tier. In the management console, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you are in the right region where you want to launch your database. And to change your region, you can click on this drop down and select the region where you want to launch your database. Next, we are going to click on services and on that database, select RDS. Before we create our database, the first thing we will do is create our subnet groups. Select subnet groups on the left side and click create DB subnet group. We are going to give it a name. I'm going to call it database subnet and we are going to give it a description. Next, under VPC, select the drop down and select your VPC. For my example, we are putting it in the demo VPC. Under add subnet, click on the drop down and select your availability zone. We are going to select USS 1A and USS 1B because that's the availability zone where we have our subnets. Then we are going to click on the subnets. In USS 1A, we want to put our database in the subnet that has the CIDR block of 10.0.4.0 slash 24. And under US East 1B, we want to put it in the 10.0.5 slash 24. Then scroll down and click create. Next, click on databases. Click create database. We are going to leave it as standard create, select MySQL, scroll down, we are going to pick our engine and I'm going to be using 5.7, scroll down. For the template, we are going to be using the free tier and on that settings, we are going to create an instance identifier, then we'll create a username and password. I'll create my instance identifier and it's just any name you want to create. And I'll create a username. And I'll create a password. And confirm my password. We are going to scroll down. Database instance size, we are going to leave it as default. The storage, we are going to leave the storage as default as well. Under availability and durability. This is where you can select the option to create a standby database. But because we are using the free tier, this option is not available and that's fine. Under connectivity, select that drop down and we are going to select our VPC, which is the demo VPC. We are going to click on the drop down for additional connectivity. Make sure the subnet group you just created is selected. For public access, we are going to leave it as no. And under existing security group, delete the default. And we are going to click on that drop down and select the security group for our database. Going to click out. Under availability zone, you can select any availability zone where you want to launch your master database or you can leave it as no preference. I'm going to launch my in USS 1A. We are going to leave the port as the same. Database authentication, we are going to leave it as default. Under additional configuration, click on that drop down. Then we are going to give our database a name. Scroll all the way down and everything should be default. We are going to leave all these settings as the same and click create database. It is now creating our database. Once the status of our database is available, we will be able to click on the database and view our endpoint information. And another thing I forgot to mention is the credentials you created for your database, make sure you save them because we are going to need those credentials when we connect our web servers to our database. In case if you don't remember, you can click on view credentials up here and it's going to show you your username and your password. Make sure you save it 
And for the other information about our database, we can find those information under the configurations tab in our database. Once the database is available, click on the database identifier name. And in here, you will see the endpoint information for the database. And on the configuration tab, you will also see other information about your database as well. And your database name, which you will need to connect to your web server, is here. And this is how you create your database. Thank you, and I will see you in the next lecture.